Guys, stop for a minute. Take a look at your wallet. Now, your wallet says a lot about you. I just want to ask, is it time for an upgrade? Our friends at Ridge are here to help you step up your wallet game. Their incredible wallet is light, sleek, and industrial. It doesn't fold or awkwardly bulge out of your back pocket. It slips into your front pocket. Ridge wallets hold up to 12 cards, plus all the cash that you need. You can choose from over 30 colors and styles. That includes carbon fiber and burnt titanium. It's the best wallet you can buy. You don't just have to take my word for it because there's over 40,000 five-star reviews. I was skeptical at first, but once I tried it, I never went back to my old wallet and I'm confident that you're gonna love it too. But guess what? No pressure. Test it out for 45 days. If you don't love it, send it back. You get a full refund. If you decide to keep it, and I really think you will, it comes with a lifetime warranty. Go to ridge.com slash chael or just click on the link below. That's gonna get you 10% off plus free worldwide shipping and returns. A really great coach will do one of two things. Generally, what great coaches who have found their way to the media will claim that they did is that they got to know their athlete. Generally, they will make that claim. Extremely unfrequently is the truth. But the great coaches out there, right? There's all sorts of guys coaching football. Nick Saban gets covered. By example, the really top guys, and they'll rewrite history. Same as every business book you've ever read, all of which are completely dishonest. They rewrite it. I knew. Everybody told me I couldn't do it, but I knew if I had this one thing. No, you didn't. You did do a good job of having the courage to go follow that, but you knew nothing. There was no guarantees. And I only share that for you because what a number of the great coaches will do and why, why they don't take credit for it and just admit to it, which is they recruit the same type. So they really didn't get to know their whole team. They didn't treat a certain guy this way on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but a different guy Monday through Friday, and a different guy was Thursday only. It's not true. They just say that it is. They know about themselves. I'm good with this kind of a guy. And one of the strengths of Sean Strickland is the less you know. Give you a great example, but Sean Strickland was very competitive and he was very difficult in a very underpromoted and only slightly watched fight against a fairly unknown commodity named Kamara Usman. Did you guys know about that fight? As a matter of fact, until Alex Piera, which I think was a number one contenders match, until that, the last loss Strickland had goes all the way back. Kamar Usman, the day I met Sean Strickland, he was 21 years old and he was 17 and 0. It's a lot of fights. For a guy that can't get any until he's an adult, for a 21 year old to find his way into 17 fights, not to mention he won them all, it's impressive. How did he win all those fights, by the way? How did Sean Strickland win 17 fights? I don't mean physically, what moves did he do? How did he get 17 fights? There's no manager that's out there hustling and working that hard for a guy who's making 1500 bucks on a Saturday. Sadly, that's just, they just want it. That's just not what they do, which means he had to line him up himself. And that's okay. But if he lined him up himself, the time he was 18, the time he was 21, and we acknowledge that there's not any money, then who's his coach? He wouldn't have had a great coach. Coach is taking a percentage. There was no percentage, right? I mean, if you tell me 150 bucks, I'm telling you that's, that's gas money. So he didn't have a, a manager helping him. He didn't have a coach looking after him. But he did 17 fights, and he won them all. He didn't have a coach looking after him. He didn't have a manager left looking after him. And guys like that are looked at as bait in this industry. You, you ever want to know why you can find a boxer that's 30 and 0? It's because he was looked after, and those 30 guys that he beat up were not looked after. It's exactly how this happens. And now you have a guy that doesn't have a coach sticking up for him. And you have a guy that doesn't have a manager sticking up for him. You have a guy that's all by himself, but he won all 17 fights. How do you do that? That's a lot of matches to win. A lot of matches to get. A lot of matches to weigh in for. A lot, of, a lot of hotels to check into. A lot of preparation. A lot of times of telling your mother there's a ticket at Will Call. How did he win them all? And I met him. I met Sean when he was 21 and he won 17 fights. 
I think he was the King of the Cake champion, he mentioned. And I asked him about those fights. He wasn't sure. I asked him who those guys were, and he wasn't sure. And if somebody told you guys that, you would think they were performing. Well, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know who he was. I don't even know who he is. I'm ready. I'll fight anybody. This was in private. This was not a performance. Sean didn't know that 12 years later, I'd be sitting here discussing it or that anybody would. When I asked him who those guys were, I asked him what their skills were, I asked him what their pedigree was, I asked him what his accomplishment, their accomplishments were, and he told me, I don't know. He didn't know. The less he knew helped him. He didn't know a lot about Kamar Usman when he fought him. He didn't know a lot about Alex Piera. First guy that Sean ever sat down to study and prepare for the way that you guys would think a professional would do was Jared Cannonier. And the single worst performance Sean has ever had was against Jared Cannonier. A lot of people think Sean won that fight. I thought Sean won that fight. It wouldn't change the fact that it was the worst I've seen him perform. I'm not talking about outcomes here. Sean's performance was timid. I have never seen him be timid. Sean's range was one quarter inch too far back the whole fight, and he knew it was. He was staying out of what we call the danger zone, which is where he lives. But this was a quarter inch back. And it was the first time that he started to feel pressure. Because it was a very difficult fight on the heels of an L in an industry that's very cutthroat. So as a way of being responsible, he went out and he did something he doesn't otherwise do, which is he got to know his opponent and he came up with a strategy. And for most guys, that would be a pat on the back. Good job. But Sean Strickland is different. And the naiveness, the lack of fear, lack of respect, many of you would say, that's true. It's true. But it's allowed him to be loose. It's allowed him to be playful. It helps his skills to be faster. It keeps his endurance very... You want to know why he never gets tired? Because he never gets worried. You will hear commentators all the time speak about pressure in sport, and they'll tell you who has the pressure, and it could be any kind of a sport. They'll tell you who has the pressure. What the commentator doesn't take the time to do is to tell you why that matters, and largely it's because they don't know. Our best and biggest and brightest and highest paid commentators in all of sport didn't do sport. And I will only share with you when they identify who has the pressure, but they don't take the time to tell you what's because they don't know. And you want to know why pressure matters? Create pressure creates a chemical release in your brain, much like adrenaline, but it's done in the form of stress, and that stress will fatigue you. I was a college wrestler. I had this explained to me by Chuck Kearney in the year 2000. I only wrestled until 2001. I wish Chuck would have told me this in 1980. You know what he told me? I wrestle hard every day. And I mean hard. I would lose 8 to 10 pounds. I would just sweat it out. Think about how hard you'd have to work to sweat out 8 pounds, right? Take my shirt off after I could wring it out. And I did. And so did my teammates. And we thought it was a big lap. And we knew we worked really hard. But then when competition came around on Saturday, we were only asked to do 7 minutes. And we would, but barely. And we wouldn't lose eight pounds, and we wouldn't be dripping wet, and we wouldn't wring our singlets out, and we weren't happy when it was done. We were exhausted. How come we could go 75 minutes in the practice room hard, and we struggled to do seven on Saturday? And the answer was, we introduced to the environment on Saturday, we introduced stress, and it creates a fatigue. I appreciate that because that's very knowledgeable and educated statement I just made that you're suddenly going to hear. And it's the difference that Sean is now dealing with. Sean is now respecting his opponent. He's now watching his opponent. He's now worrying. What happens 
what will my future be like tomorrow if, and these are questions he never asked himself. These are worries and stresses that he has never had to deal with. And now here it is. And the less you know would be helpful, but Sean is in a coaching environment. Sean's at practice. He's at gyms. He has to be there. He has to keep up. He has to read about guys. He has to study other guys. People are coming to Sean as pupils and saying, hey, coach, how do I beat this guy? Sean's having to go watch this guy. He's have to give him a game plan. He's happy. He's doing things that he didn't otherwise do, and they're very mature. They're very responsible. I'm just sharing with you. It's different. The definition of insanity is to do something over and over and expect a different result. Okay, well, the other side of the coin is to do something different. You can expect to get something different. This is different. I don't know that I like it. It's different. And this opponent has all sorts of strong points. For everybody in the UFC does. This opponent has all sorts of strong points that you can point to. If you take the time to go and look for them, if you take the time to show them the respect to strategize for them, I met Sean Strickland. He fought 21 men. Nobody did him any favors. He wasn't supposed I apologize. He was 21 years old. He beat 17 men. He wasn't supposed to be. That's the part he doesn't know. Nobody did him a favor. That's the part he doesn't know. He got brought in to lose. That's the part he doesn't know. He didn't lose because he didn't care and he didn't focus and he went out and he clipped it playful. That is the truth and that is the approach and the ability that Team Strickland had better hope comes with him this weekend.